In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Amen. I'm not going to say MC. Because we're not there yet. But this is, uh, this is still an important celebration, this whole week of Advent in a single day. We've been waiting, waiting for the Lord, waiting on his promises. And now we're almost close enough to taste it. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in. I was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth, I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I was first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. The words to our responsory, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And he will be called Great, the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? The angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we are in the fourth week of Lent. It started for this parish at 5 o'clock this evening, and it will end at 4 o'clock.
tomorrow evening. One day, it doesn't happen very often. I don't know, I'm not a, that kind of an astronomer to figure this all out and how the calendar works. So, but we knew it was coming and we sort of planned for it. So don't look at any of these decorations up here. Just pretend they're not here. And you notice the lights aren't on, so most of you that will allow you to take that long lost nap because we have passed into the, uh, what is it called? The, not the summer solstice, not the fall solstice. Whatever. <laughs> We're in winter. <laughs> and it's Michigan, so you don't know what the weather will be. Some places do, but we never do. The promise of God is the message for this weekend. Is it about to be fulfilled in our time? We may ask, how in this time? It was over 2,000 years ago that Christ was born. The manifestation of the Messiah is given in increments by God. I caught that phrase from somewhere. I don't remember where. And then I said, how can that be given in increments? God does something, it's done, right? The increments are, in fact, in these readings especially, the Old Testament reading, David receives a message through the prophet Nathan that the Messiah will come from his line. Now David had been wandering around fighting everybody in the world, trying to establish, well, in the known world at that time, establish his kingdom. And he was finally able to rest. And he wanted to build a new temple. I don't know if there ever was another temple, probably not. He wanted to build the temple. That's kind of like us trying to build a church. It takes a lot of dough and a lot of time. And they didn't have those big cranes to lift those beams up. They had to do all that by hand. And he was all ready to go. He talked to Nathan. Nathan says, yep, sure, go do it. But God came to Nathan that night and said, yes, the prophet will be from your line, but you will not be building me a temple. There's more to that, but I'm not going to get into it here. If we go, so that's the first time that we heard that the Messiah would be coming. The second time was in Paul, in his epistle to the Romans. He makes it known that through the prophets, the manifestation is made known to all the nations through Jesus Christ. Seems a little out of order, because this is after Christ had rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. But he's talking to the Romans when he's trying to convince them to remain in their Christian faith. And to look for the fact that God is being manifest at that time through Jesus Christ. Not any of those foreign gods or any of that stuff. And now we get to the good stuff. I think it's the good stuff. In this gospel, Mary receives the manifestation of the Messiah. And is told by the angel Gabriel that she is to be an instrument of that manifestation. Gabriel is speaking the message that God gave him. He really doesn't have a him or her, but we have to give him something. So it's the message of God. God does not force this, his will upon Mary. He could have, but he didn't. He asked her to accept the manifestation of Christ. And as we know from the gospel reading, she begins by stating that she does not understand how this can be that she can be the mother of Christ because she is betrothed to Joseph, but they are not yet married. Gabriel assures her that it will be through the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit that she will become pregnant and that the child to be born will be holy, the Son of God. Mary, in her humility, assents to God by saying, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. It's strange that even at that time, Mary knew that even though she was being addressed by an angel, 
which was very unusual in that time, that he was, or the angel was, carrying the very word of God himself. It was finally fulfilled when Christ was conceived. You may ask, how that, can that be? And that Christ would be fulfilled in our time as well. I ask you, isn't the coming of the Messiah fulfilled every time we celebrate Christmas, each year? We also celebrate each time we make someone else's Christmas special. We have an opportunity to give gifts to those we love. We have an even greater opportunity when we do it for someone who cannot count on it. That's why we have the giving tree out. It's in the back still. It's lit. To give to those who are less fortunate. For ourselves too, we can give the gift in reconciliation and on Christmas by receiving the newborn Christ in the Eucharist. Then we accept Christ as Mary did by stating, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word.